Hello and welcome to Datacast Solutions Statistics and Data Mining 101 using Nine. In this chapter we're going to talk about using tree ensembles for dimensional reduction. Now decision tree ensembles, which are also referred to as random forests, are very useful um, for feature selection as well as using them for classifiers, which is what they're traditionally used for. One approach to dimensional reduction is to generate a large and carefully constructed set of trees against a target attribute, like the big donor attribute we've been using in our examples, and then use each attribute's usage statistics to find the most informative subset of features. So the key here is instead of using a decision tree learner, I'm going to use a tree ensemble learner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a set of very shallow trees. They're not going to go deep. Each tree is going to be trained on a small fraction of the total number of attributes. So let's start by training 2,000 trees. And each tree is independently on two levels and three attributes. And these settings provide for good feature selection in a reasonable amount of time for this data set that we've been using. Now, if an attribute is often selected as a best split, it means it's most likely a very informative feature in the prediction model. Once all the trees have been generated, then we're going to calculate a score for each attribute by counting how many times it had been selected for a split and at which rank, which is the level in the tree, um, among the available attributes or candidates in the trees of the ensemble. So this score is going to tell us relative to the other attributes which are the most predictive, which the decision tree most often decides to make use of. Now finally at this point one more step is needed and that's to find out which features score higher than you would expect by random chance. And in order to do that, we're going to identify the set of most predictive features in the ensemble. And we're going to repeat the first two steps, as we already described above. But we're going to replace the real target column with a shuffled version of the same column using the target shuffling node. And then we're going to repeat this process many times until a reliable estimate of the chance baseline score can be calculated. Essentially, scores for an attribute against a real target with a value exceeding the baseline chance can be assumed to be useful in modeling. So in, a, in my mind, that's going to mean three standard deviations or beyond. All right, so I know that was a lot of, it was kind of complicated, but this will seem a lot more clear as I show you an example. And so I've, again, I've extracted this example like I have many others. Um, I extracted this off of the um, NIME Hub um, by some people who wrote some really great workflows that really demonstrate this capability. So as usual, what I'm doing is I'm taking my test data set and I'm going to run it through to determine which are the columns using tree ensembles as we described, which columns make the most sense. And then I use those columns as a reference filter against my testing data. So let's look at the tree ensemble. Okay. Again, there's two sections just exactly as we talked about. First is I'm going to create two models. So let's go ahead and look at the tree ensemble again. Okay. So I'm basically allowing every attribute to flow through here. But on the tree options tab, okay, you can see that I've limited the tree to have only two levels in the tree. Okay? And in the ensemble configuration, I'm doing attribute sampling. I'm doing an absolute limit of three. Okay? And I'm going to build 2,000 models. You can see up here at the top. Okay? And I'm not doing a fraction of the data, so um, that's been turned off. And from that, again, I showed you the math formula that I'm taking the number of splits, I'm determining the score by the number of splits and the number of levels. And so when I look at the output of that, okay, I've now got a score. So for each variable, you can see the row ID is the variable. 
and that's the score that I've computed for them. So I use the row ID to capture the row ID and make it a column. So now the row ID has been pulled into a variable called bar. And then finally, I've added this constant called target. Okay? And this is our actual you know, model, so this case. What I'm going to do for the base, remember we said we're going to use the base and we're going to execute this. I've chosen to execute it 50 times. And with each case, I do a target shuffle, which basically just shuffles all... Let's take a look at it. Okay. I'm taking the column name called target, okay, and the seed parameter is actually controlled by a variable, and it's the current iteration. So I'm always producing a different value. And then I'm generating another 2000, but by shuffling the target around so that which row had yes and no will always change. In other words, basically, random chance. That's what we're trying to simulate. What's the likelihood a column was selected in the ensemble via random chance? So I run the same math formula, and look at the output here again, at this end of the loop. And instead of case target, I've got case dummy. So these are all the random chance. And then these are all the variables, again, that were selected by random chance for that target and I concatenate them all together and then finally I'm going to perform the filter now. So let's take a look at the filter. First I'm going to keep just the score, the variable, and the target dummy columns. So let's take a look there. So I've got the score, I've got the variable, and the case. So there's the target and if I scroll down there's all the dummy values for it. Now I'm going to use a pivoting motion here. And I'm going to take for each variable, the pivot across the columns is going to be case. So the case, remember, will be target or dummy. And then the manual aggregation, I'm going to produce the maximum, the mean, and the standard deviation for each column. So let's take a look and what the pivot table looks like. So now for variable one, the dummy, these are the random ones, okay, I can make these each a little bigger, there's the max, the mean, standard deviation, and the target, max, mean, and standard deviation. Now as I look across here, remember the target, each target only occurred once. Um, so that's why you're seeing a standard deviation of um, zero. But for each variable, I'm going to be able to compare the target back to the dummy. So I'm going to use this math formula, and I'm going to say take the dummy's mean score and add 1.5 to the dummy standard deviation, and that's a limit. Now, what I'm going to do for a row filter is find the outliers. If the target mean score is greater than the limit, I'm going to keep the record. So in other words, if the target's mean is greater than the random chance plus one and a half times the standard deviation, then this is most likely a real value, a real predictor that's going to come through. So. I will put the row ID names out and I've now got the ver the row ID is now the variable and then finally I'm going to transpose the table. So now for each row ID for each column here I've got the values. I can now use the reference column filter to say these are the columns that I want to keep from the original test data set. So now I've only got 32 columns where I started with 230. I've now got 32 columns that according to the random forest are very likely 
to, to have an impact on my classification or my prediction. And then of course I keep the column filter, the target value is always appended back to the beginning. So that is the filter. So now the output we have here is these are the columns and I could now continue to run my real bag of models and I could continue to do what I want. And in this case, I will also use a reference row filter against the testing data set. We applied this against the training data set, but the testing data set, I'll also use the reference column filter so that we had 33 columns come out and I'll have 33 columns coming out of here. My 10,000 rows here and my 40,000 rows here. That's my 80-20. So that's how we're using the tree ensemble method. So I hope that makes the previous discussion a lot more clear. That completes this chapter of the class. Feel free to move on to the next chapter.